Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please. Kerbal Space Program. Thank you for your uh, patience as I work on the, the finer points of this moon landing, which we are actually like extremely close to accomplishing, I think. Why do these cost two? I'm going to go with the one that's more expensive here, because presumably that's the one that's done correctly. Um, I'm going to make like the world's slightest alterations here. I'm going to put one more small fuel tank, like half the size of these earlier ones. And I recognize that it's probably a, a newbie mistake to think that um, fuel is our problem when it's probably piloting. But I know that I need more fuel, not so much for the burn, but for the retrograde burn when we're coming into our own orbit here. Um, otherwise, we explode. Um, we, need, we need to slow down. We should probably save our remaining fuel to slow down as much as possible on re-entry as well, instead of just shooting at three kilometers per second and exploding. Um, that way we can probably save our science as well. So to add a little bit more, um, a little bit more, um, value to our first hopefully successful, not just moon landing, but like moon return, I'm also going to throw a little bit like a barometer experiment storage unit. I don't know, maybe this allows you to store the results of your science and then do another science experiment on the same module, but I think for now this is fine. So we're going to save this. This is the Moonlander Test 07. We don't need to revert to version 1.00 because we know that this is capable of not only landing on the moon but also returning from the moon. Is is everything set up properly here again? Yeah, I mean, that's th these are all okay. I'd like to make these fire at the same time, just for simplicity's sake. Alright, I don't know if this is the one. But we're gonna try. And I'm also gonna try, um... To execute a slight gravity turn. Just to try... To, um... Preserve a little bit of fuel... On our, on our ascent here. Even just a slight movement to the 45 degree angle here should help us get to orbit a little bit faster even though our apoapsis should be lower I'm assuming um, which I think may allow me a little bit more tolerance on our second stage but but we'll see so we're about to lose our fuel here so we'll go boom boom there we go um, Apoapsis, you know what? Hold it at 70. I, I have I have faith that we can accomplish this at 70. Although 70 is like real <laughs> real low. I'm a hopeful that because we put ourselves on on a little bit of an angle coming up, you know, we've got uh, a more gentle apoapsis, and as a result, we've already done, I wouldn't say half, but you know, we've done some of our work. When it comes to, uh, when it comes to, uh, moving that, uh, vector around the planet. But we're just experimenting with some stuff here because, you know, I, I think we still have a lot of room to grow, uh, for f piloting specifically. But we'll see. So, 70,600. Let's warp to about here, even though that's a warp that's literally going to save us 26 seconds. So, probably a little bit inefficient to to waste our time worrying about that um but that's okay and here's here's the crux of the whole the whole shebang right now is uh how quickly can we make this vector stretch across Kerbin so that we can start working on our approach vector our maneuver node might be a, a better way to put that Even if we are piloting uh, slightly inefficiently, and I will be the first person to tell you that there's a fairly reasonable chance that that is indeed the case. Um, we, we've managed to make it to the moon. We've been quick saving along the way. There's there's basically like only a couple of parts of this moonshot that are difficult. Achieving a good orbit, we'll see how it works on this one. Um, but we got a long way to go, obviously. Uh, Landing is difficult. I don't think I've uh, I've mastered landing. In case that's not 
extremely obvious. Uh, then getting an approach vector to come back to Kerbin has been fairly difficult so far. We're getting close here. Apart from that, it, it's been relatively okay. Keep in mind we have more fuel this time, so the fact that we might be using more of our second stage fuel to get to the stage that we're going to is actually okay by me. And we're going to wait till this periapsis hits like 70, so we're stable. Oh, okay, that's fine. We were going to use a lot of fuel there. Um, okay, so we're, we're actually in like a nice, very circular orbit. So the next step, as we know, is you uh, create a maneuver node. And then you pull out the prograde marker until you have a... Oh, that was way too fast. So you have an orbit that intersects with the moon's orbit. Even a little bit more, I think, is okay. Then we want to move this. And I think we want to stretch the prograde marker out even just like a little bit more. Because we don't really want a moon escape. We just want a moon encounter. Okay, good stuff. The burn is going to be 30 seconds in 6 minutes. So let's uh, position ourselves along the maneuver node. We're not going to get 30 seconds of fuel out of the remaining engines. But, you know, the more fuel that we get out of this section, the less we have to worry about our um, our fuel when it comes for re-entry. Like landing and re-entry. And if we could use less fuel during landing, that would probably be a big bonus for us as well. But we do have, um, I mean, we had 1,200 fuel for our final stage last time. This time we're going to have uh, 1,800. Yeah, that's correct. We're going to have 1,800, um, assuming everything works properly. So we've got about 50% more fuel. Of course, the more fuel to have, the, or the more fuel you have, the more fuel you're using to move your fuel. But... If I remember Quill's advice, he said, more engines makes you go faster, more fuel makes you go farther. And I don't, again, I might, I'm probably paraphrasing him and uh, espousing a little bit of ignorance here, but. So we want to go until, uh, people are probably so frustrated with my clock control. <laughs> we want to go until there's about 15 seconds remaining. So I'll go on speed 50 for like a second. And then go back to speed 10. Yeah, okay. So we want to go until 15 seconds remaining. Again, I really doubt we're going to get... Um... Slow down, please. I really doubt we're going to get uh, 30 seconds of burn out of this section. Which means we'll probably have to do like another 40 uh, seconds of burn out of the next section. But because the, the engines are way less fuel efficient. Or way, way less efficient in general. But it's still, we're accomplishing, you know, at least roughly half to two-thirds of our maneuver here. Maybe even a little bit more. Still got to burn for about 39 seconds. Um, again, I'm assuming it's because we're, we have a higher mass now. If nothing else, at least because we're failing to return, we're getting really, really good practice towards getting to the moon. And getting to the moon on our first attempt instead of, you know, literally, it makes it look like a baby's game, you know, before where we were like, we're just going to rotate around Kerbin at 10,000 times speed until we intersect with it and hope for the best. Two, one... Stop. Okay, so we're essentially at the maneuver. Um, you know, it's what they always say about rocket science is that it's like super inexact. So um, we're going to warp to the moon encounter as we as we are wont to do. And I'm going to try something uh, a little... A little different. Uh, well, obviously we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing that we've always done for a second here, but then we're gonna try something a little different. I want to try to use less fuel, and as a result, use almost all of the almost all of the burn that I want to do. I want to do closer to the surface once we actually have um, a, a, a trajectory that's gonna presumably land us on the moon. So we've got to decay this periapsis to the point that it uh, collides with the moon. 
It's crazy to think that every single one of these steps was like a video in and of itself. <laughs> but we're, we're putting it all together here. You know, this is the final... It's not the final exam. This is like the Kerbal Space Program midterm. And I'm hoping the course gets a little bit easier once we've got these basics down, you know? We're studying for our, our KSP midterm right now. And I'm hoping to come out of it with at least like a C. We've been up and down. We've had some A's. We've had a lot of D's, I'd say. Don't say these nuts. It's beneath you. This is an intellectual game for intellectuals like you and me. You and I. Actually, Superman does good. You and I do well. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Okay, uh, quick save. Success. Uh, and we have a ton of fuel left, so let's just basically go speed 100 here because we got a we got a long way to go. And still got a long, long way to go. Still got a long, long way to go. Okay, slow your roll a little bit here. I still think, like, if we were to... We would be wasting fuel. I'm going to wait until we get, like, maybe 150,000 meters above the surface. The planet's approaching at an, at an alarming pace, I'll admit. So we we have some uh, we have some stuff on our to do list. I think now is an okay time to start. So step one, um, we want to get this retrograde marker. Let's quick save because this is fine. Um, we want to get our retrograde marker roughly to the polar indicator on the nav ball. Yeah, sweetie, you're doing fine. Just keep it up. Like Toto said, ooh, gonna take some time. It's not gonna be instantaneous here. Um, not to mention, uh, anything I do with rockets is inexact. Like, you notice the, the fact that we're, like, sort of tumbling end over end here to try to get this to match up with the, the polar indicator? We could probably adjust it so our nav ball is, like, always pointing up. I actually just tried to zoom in on my monitor. Uh, which makes no sense. Okay, that's pretty good. It'll start to get less good, I'm assuming, as we approach the surface of the planet. But for now, fine. Um, and now I think we can go speed 10 for a second here. We did slow ourselves down a little bit. Because we were uh, burning towards the... Towards space instead of towards the moon. So I think we'll just cool our jets here. We're going to wait until maybe, you know, 60,000 meters. Uh, and then we're going to start rapidly slowing our descent. Pretty simple math. If we're going 1,000 meters per second, which we won't be. If we're going uh, 500 meters per second at 60,000 meters, we have two real-time minutes before we land. So we got a lot of time to slow down. In fact, I think we can afford to go to like 50. Oh, that's that's way too fast. Okay, so we're going to go to 42,000 meters, which is what I was going to say was like the ideal time to do it anyway to begin with, of course. So right now, uh, very simple. We're going to hit full throttle because we waited way too long to begin our uh, deceleration. And the number one priority, and I'm not being insincere when I say this, we want to slow the progression of the nav ball. We want to stay, like, as soon as we notice a problem, course correct. I think we can afford to decelerate a little bit here. We're still quite a distance above the, the surface of the celestial body here. It just takes a little while to remind yourself of that, because we've been, like, millions of meters above it in the past. We're still, I mean, got a hundred seconds until landing, roughly. And it's, we're slowing down, slowly but surely, not using very much fuel. I think this is fine. This, honestly, right now, it seems like a pretty controlled descent. 
We've also, from the last time, we know that this lander is like... I'm not gonna say it's the best designed lander in history, but dude, did you see the beating it took when we landed last time? And it still completely survived, so... This is like, it seems like a beginner-friendly lander. We still got about a hundred seconds to land. So we can actually afford to cut throttle for a second here. Probably take a quick save. Everything from my perspective looks fine. And we did, we got a little off on the nav ball, which is why adjusting here. We're accelerating, we don't want to accelerate. Slowly nuking this horizontal distance. Good. Horizontal velocity, I should say. Still tons of fuel. And I think we're we're actually at a pretty good rate here. Um, we could always... I mean, we're getting pretty close. We can also slow ourselves much more rapidly... Uh, basically at any time. We're at only a, just over a third of throttle, I think. We certainly don't want to land going 50 meters per second, but... You know, we can, we can change that pretty quick. In case you didn't believe me. There you go. So about, I think like 6 meters per second is what the guide that I read said, but... Um, you know, we could also maybe stay at around 10 for now, just so we don't, you know, we still have a little bit of thrust with which to fix my, uh, nav ball here. Sorry, I'm... Focus for the, the runner requires focus here, please. Keep it up, keep it up. This is fine. Dude, this is actually fine. Nav ball's a little messed, that's okay. Focus on that nav ball. Keeping your speed right around here. No. We've done it. Okay. That was a little harrowing. But dude, that's not for me. That's for Valentina. Valentina, you did a great job. Congrats. Uh, first try. <laughs> What do you mean, crew report from the moon's lowlands plus 20 science? Oh, this is a crew report. That's right. Sorry, I was I forgot about the materials bay. There we go. Um, closed doors. All right, uh, so we've got our quick save. Pretty much, you know, exactly the position we were in last time. And that was, we didn't have to do any changes there, so that's nice. And we have roughly the same amount of relative fuel, but more fuel absolutely. So we, um, we should have a, a little bit of extra control over this issue now. So we're going to take off, and we're going to put landing gear up. And we're going to turn ever so slightly to the east. Which is more in this direction, if I'm correct. Just give ourselves like a little throttle straight up and uh, try to get this apoapsis at a level that's... I'm going to try like 20,000 apoapsis. Yeah, it's acceptable in my opinion. Now, this is the hard part. Add maneuver. Pull out the prograde marker. And then we're just trying to... We're looking for purple, I think. It seems like one heck of an orbit. 
We don't have a ton of time here, if I'm being honest. And th this maneuver is not going to do it, essentially. Um, how close are we to apoapsis? Oh, we got some time. Okay, so let's... Let's pull the maneuver back to apoapsis around the moon and see if we can get this to somehow collide with the... Um, with Kerbin. Because, like, we can, we can... This will orbit the moon now. If we maneuver here, we'll orbit the moon. But we need to escape the orbit of the moon. So we pull this back a little bit. Okay, okay, now we're talking. Periapsis of 1.6 million. Periapsis of 1.4 million. I don't think we need no periapsis, but... We do want, like, as little as... Okay, I, we're gonna try, we're gonna try this. Estimated burn. We, we have essentially have to do it right now. Because we're already late. And we gotta burn for over a minute to make this happen. So definitely, like, I need to... I need to work on my, my takeoff from the moon. I don't think there's any... <laughs> any debate about that. The problem with this is we also, ideally, would like to save uh, enough fuel to slow ourselves down so we don't burn up in the atmosphere. But this is an attempt, at least, and uh, we'll, we'll see if this works. We're certainly going to have enough fuel to, to do the burn. Because um, we've already done more than half of it, and we've uh, got a lot remaining here. So we have to first orbit the moon. Maybe we should just enter an orbit around the moon before we do anything. It might... It might make our orbit that much simpler to attain. We only got 15 seconds of burn left, that's fine. And, uh... Okay, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, cut. Alright. Okay, uh... <laughs> We're gonna... I think we might do like a... Weird little circular or like a vertical orbit here, but that's, you know, what we get for working in three dimensions here. So, let's... I mean, let's let's see how she goes. I'm not going to autosave yet because this might be hell, but... Give me, give me speed 1000, we can handle it. Yeah, okay, so... Apoapsis of 11 million, that's quite far out. Keep your electric eye on Valentine, babe. Put your ray gun to my head. Oh, there we go. You just doubled. Oh no, I was trying to set as a target earlier. That's that's correct. All right. So I'm I'll just be straight up with you. I'm eyeballing it. Um. Like like big time. Please go to speed one. Please go to speed one. Please go to speed one. Please go to... I'm mad. I'm actually mad because I was... Because I had the right clip... Right clip. The right click contextual menu up. It actually would not uh, allow me to slow down the timer. So, I mean, obviously I should... Uh, so, that worked. Um, obviously I should know that that's the case, but I'm a little cheesed off that it disables all these UI controls up here. But, again, I'm not gonna... I'm not going to rail on Kerbal Space Program too much for that, when it's also an error of my own impatience. Um, but that is a little silly. That's what the quick save's for, regardless, so... We're going to take this up. It's like, almost literally straight up, straight down here. So, if we, uh... Can we click on this? Are you going to let me? Sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. Add Manoeuvre. Pull this out. Yeah, this might work. We should have quick saved on our last one, but... I think you can forgive me for being a little, uh, scared. Faster, please. Faster, please. That's, that's just it? We're at the maneuver now? Yep. Yeah. We're at the maneuver. Okay. Um, tell you what. 
Add maneuver. No, disable this one, dude. Add maneuver. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Work with me here. What is this? Kerbin Apoapsis is green now? What a country. Sick, yeah, just... Oh, that's not gonna collide with it at all! That flies off into the stratosphere... Okay, just... Dude. Oh, we had it under control. It was so good for a second. Just the freaking timer, dude. There you go. Yeah, that's... <laughs> this is how you get an orbit. Apoapsis is like... 10 meters, but still. So I don't know, I don't think we need to enter orbit of, around the moon. This might actually be for the best. I mean, we're at, we're at the point where it's been enough episodes where I should probably just look up like a tutorial about how to, uh, as efficiently as possible, re-enter Kerbin. That does not appear to collide with the moon. Dude, we, how much time do we have? One minute? Estimated burn. Okay, so we got a... <laughs> F5. We got a, we got a good setup here. We got to burn for a minute and 11 seconds, which uh, is 71 seconds. So we want to burn with about 35, 36 seconds remaining, um, which is right now. Let's go. So yeah, we're going to... Escape the moon, be recaptured by Kerbin, and we're gonna go way out. We're gonna go 13 million meters away, and then we're gonna come back. And hopefully, we're gonna have some fuel for when we do, uh, because we still have 43 seconds of burn left, which means we're not. I mean, we're at halfway when we hit zero seconds here, so we gotta, we got a ways to go. Presumably, we're gonna be pretty light. Shouldn't be too hard to slow ourselves down. Um, but, you know, we got, we got time, and I'm a little frightened, which I think is, is fair to say. Okay, I think that's our escape then. Um, 12 seconds remaining. We're gonna have some fuel. Been captured by a different celestial body. Three, two, and one, and stop. Okay. Pretty, pretty good, honestly. Um... Exit here. Quick save. I would have loved for this to have been a flawless mission, dude. Rest assured. But um, for now, Kerbin Periapsis is 20,000. Dude, this is actually great. Um, because 20,000, I don't think... I think that's unstable. I think we'll slow down enough at Apoapsis to, to re-enter the atmosphere... Hopefully we can do so slowly. Dude, we barely cleared the moon here, which is also sweet. But anyway. Um, so, so escape. Um, just you, you got some time here. We escape the moon's orbit, or sphere of influence. And become recaptured by Kerbin's sphere of influence. Now just don't bring up any markers. And as we get closer, uh, I mean, we can go to even 10,000 time for now, but as we get closer, how much fuel do we have? Do we have an estimated burn if we, like, right-click the engine? Don't think so. How about each fuel tank? No. But if, what if we bring up this? Uh, no. Um, okay. There's got to be something that tells us how much burn we have left. So we had 1,800. We actually have 720. I guess the, the number is the model number, not the amount of fuel that it has. Which is probably good to know, right? Um, so I'm just going to say warp me to here. I'll let the game handle it. Okay, time warp complete. Uh, we could probably... This is a good time for a quick save. If this isn't going to work, I don't know if it's ever going to work. So you know what? Warp me to here. This one's only five minutes away, which means periapsis is coming very close. So burning along the retrograde is really going to decay our, our periapsis as well. So 
we have to um, be aware of that. So this is really my ideal, like, slow us down as much as possible so we're not re-entering the atmosphere at, at freaking warp speed. So this is accomplishing two purposes, to the best of my knowledge, at least. Um, we will hit the surface of Kerbin faster, or it, we will spend less time in space. So we will enter Kerbin faster, but at a slower speed, as much as that sounds. Because we're decaying our max, our, our minimum uh, height here. Now, I will admit, um, I was really hoping we could have slowed ourselves down a little bit more than this because I'm not sure that even like 2,000 meters per second is really going to help me out all that much, but it is also going to mean that we're hitting uh, the planet at a, a less, you know, 90 degree angle, which might give us an edge as we re-enter here. We're still going to be going about 2,000 kilometers a second, which is mighty fast. I mean, we're going to be going 2,000 meters per second, like, soon. Which means that, in a minute, we might be going 3,000. But I think my, uh, my principles are correct here. There you go. Um, and again, I think, uh, basically, I'll be the first to tell you. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Valentina's chances right now. Let's slow down. Um, we, I think we can actually go to like speed three, but let's see if she's capable of handling this here. Steady. The science module can go. I want it to live, but if it blows, it blows, dude. I think she's gonna make it. We're through the thickest part of the atmosphere. I think. Oh, we're starting to... We got a weird wobble going on there, but dude, we're gonna live. We're actually going to live. Valentina, please tell me your parachute works. Oh, we've done it. Did we successfully come back from the moon? I would say that we had about exactly as much fuel as we needed there uh, with our level of flying. And it wasn't first try, but we have now... The, the seeds have been planted for a successful Jebediah rescue mission. We're going to get so much science. I am a happy man. Oh, okay. Where did we land anyway? Where's we landed here? I think where's the space center? I don't even remember. It's here. Was that? Would, no, that doesn't. That's we got another part that's over there or something. Recover vessel, dude. One hundred and fifty science earned. The pi I don't care about the money. Valentina gained six experience, so she's the new Jeb. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. This was a huge milestone that I couldn't have done without you. And I'll see you next time.